Now, in 1929, American astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered a relationship between the distances of galaxies and their recession velocities. It turns out that most of the galaxies in the universe from our vantage point move away from us. Some of those that are nearby, that are in the local group, are being pulled towards the Milky Way uh, uh, by the force of gravity, right? For instance, Andromeda is moving towards the Milky Way. It's currently at a distance of 2.3 million light years, and it's moving at a huge speed of 120 kilometers per second, and it will probably uh, interact, collide with the Milky Way in about four or five billion years, just uh, when the sun runs out of energy, right? Uh, but most of the other galaxies are actually moving away from us. So, and it was, as we'll discuss a bit later, one of the most important uh, discoveries of the previous century because it reveals something spectacular about our universe. It actually demonstrated that the universe, in fact, the space-time of our universe is expanding. So uh, basically uh, what he did, he uh, used the data uh, on recession velocities obtained by another American astronomer, Vesto Slipher who basically measured uh, the shift of the spectral lines uh, of, of, of the light coming from various ga galaxies and assuming that that shift in the wavelength uh, results from the Doppler effect, he was able to determine uh, their uh, recession speed. Okay, so for instance, if here is the Milky Way galaxy, and here is another galaxy moving, say, away from us with some speed v. The wavelength of the light that it produces and it's traveling to us, uh, we perceive uh, to be increased. Lambda would be the wavelength that we would observe if uh, the other galaxy was not moving relative to us, but because the source is moving away from us, we detect that wavelength to be slightly longer. And this delta lambda is the shift. And the simple theory tells us that basically the relationship between the shift and the recession speed is like this. That the ratio of the change in the wavelength over the wavelength that we would measure with the stationary so source is equal to the ratio of its speed of relative motion, in this case, recession away from us, divided by the speed of light. So what he did, he measured the change in the wavelength, and using this relationship, he was able to um, deduce the speed. Okay, so uh, here is a little history uh, 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 of uh, his measurements. Um, and in 1913, he found that the Andromeda galaxy is, uh, its spectrum is blue shifted, telling us that Andromeda and the Milky Way are approaching each other. Then in um, 1915, uh, he had more data. He found that 11 out of 15 galaxies have their spectra redshifted. So clearly, uh, the majority uh, of the galaxies uh, are moving away from us. And then in 1917, he had more data, and he established that 17 out of 21 
So, except for those galaxies that are very close to us, like Andromeda, uh, the spectra of virtually all other galaxies are redshifted. And he knew that they were more distant because if the uh, source of light is more distant, it's less bright, right? So he knew that these things are more distant. Uh, 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 those whose spectra are redshifted. However, it was Hubble who actually measured the distances to these galaxies and used Slipher's data on their recession speed to establish a relationship that is now called the Hubble's law. And because uh, what he found was extremely important, he lobbied very hard for him and Henrietta Swan-Levitt to get the Nobel Prize for physics. He was, Hubble was a lawyer by training, okay? So he knew how to, if you will, sell himself. But he didn't realize when the recommendation uh, came to the Swedish Academy of Sciences that actually uh, Henrietta Swan-Levitt was already dead. She contracted tuberculosis and died. Okay, and Hubble never got uh, the Nobel Prize, but if he did, he should have actually shared it also with Vesta Slipher, because without Slipher's data, uh, this would not be uh, possible. Okay, so this is what he found. So here on the vertical axis is uh, the recession velocity of a galaxy. On the horizontal axis is distance. The dots represent the actual data. And what he noticed is that basically the da data are fitted quite nicely by a straight line. That is if you double the distance, the recession velocity is doubled. If you triple the distance, the recession velocity is tripled. So the recession velocity is some constant that now bears his name uh, times the distance. And this relationship is uh, known as the Hubble's law, <coughs> where this constant h, that is called Hubble's constant, is basically just the slope of this straight line. And the current value, I mean, there was lots of um, revision and so on and so forth, <coughs> and the current value of the Hubble's constant is 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Just to remind you or tell you, for those of you who did not take astronomy 1P01, is that one uh, megaparsec is million parsecs, which is another unit used in astronomy to measure the distances between the stars. And one parsec happen, happens to be equal to 3.26 light years. So one megaparsec is the distance of 3.26 million light years. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what Hubble uh, established and uh, what uh, brought him fame. Now, the Hubble's law uh, actually, uh, as I mentioned before, reveals uh, something spectacular about our universe. And this expansion is not 
uh, the expansion of stars and galaxies in pre-existing space, which is like an empty stage in which things uh, uh, happen, okay? Which was the Newtonian view. Newton's view of space and time were that they were there forever, uniform uh, and uh, smooth. Uh, in Newtonian mechanics, the space and, uh, is a stage in which the events happen. Well, this was, as I will discuss uh, later, consistent with Einstein's general theory of relativity. Uh, uh, so the important thing to realize here is that uh, the space, so how can we uh, see that Hubble's law implies an expansion of space. So to illustrate that, we'll, I'll take the simplest possible case of one dimensional universe, the universe that exists all in the straight line. And assume that the space itself is doubling in size every hour. Okay, then we have the following. So here is our one dimensional universe. So I will depict a situation that exists, say, now. So here is you. And then uh, some distance away from you, say 10 kilometers, is another person, say Mike, and 10 kilometers away from him is another person, say Joe. Okay, so the distance between you and Mike is 10 kilometers and the distance between Mike and Joe is also 10 kilometers. So if the space doubles every hour, in one hour, the situation will be like this. You are where you are. You don't uh, notice that anything uh, is happening to you. You are sitting at, uh, at the given spot. Okay, so you are where you are. Ah. So this is you. But now the distance between you and Mike has doubled. It has increased from 10 kilometers to 20 kilometers. So Mike is now here. And the distance between Joe and Mike has doubled in one hour. So uh, now the distance between Mike and Joe is 20 kilometers, just like it is between you and Mike. <clears throat> so now the distance between you and Mike is 20 kilometers and the distance between Mike and Joe is also 20 kilometers. <clears throat> so what you see you see that in one hour, Mike has moved relative to you by 10 kilometers. Your distance from him has increased by 10 kilometers in one hour. And then you would say that Mike's speed relative to you is 10 kilometers per hour, right? Because he has moved 
10 kilometers from a distance of 10 to the distance of 20 in one hour. At the same time, Joe has moved uh, 20 kilometers, right? In the space of one hour. Right? Initially, the distance between you and Joe was 10 plus 10 is 10 kilometers. Now it's 20 plus 20, it's 40 kilometers. So Joe has moved 20 kilometers relative to you, and you would say, well, Joe is moving away from me at twice the speed. So recession velocity of Mike and Joe, as observed by you, is proportional to, there is a constant times the distance between uh, you and another person. <coughs> so this constant in this uh, toy example plays the role of Hubble's constant. And in our case here, it is basically uh, equal to just one kilometer per hour per kilometer, right? So if the distance is, uh, say for uh, uh, Joe, is uh, 20 kilometers, <coughs> um, and no, this should be, uh, so I have distance here is 40, so it should be, um, uh, half, right? So in this case here, the constant is 0 0.5 kilometers per hour per kilometer, right? Right, because if I multiply, say, with uh, uh, his distance from you, which is uh, uh, um, 40 kilometers here, then the recession speed is half of that 20, right? In the case of Mike, who is at the distance uh, one hour later at 20 kilometers, his rece recession speed is going to be 10 kilometers per hour. So I hope you see that this proportionality of the recession speed of an object relative to the observer with distance is consistent with the notion that the space itself is expanding. So we here on Earth, which is revolving around the sun, which in turn is revolving around the center of the Milky Way, we are located in the Milky Way, and uh, we see from their redshift that the other galaxies, as if they are moving away from us, but, <coughs> Uh, somebody living in another distant galaxy would say, no, 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 no. All the other galaxies, including Milky Way, are moving away from me, okay? So, and that is the consequence of the expansion of space itself. There is no single center of the expansion. It's not that uh, 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 we are at the center of the expansion and everything uh, rushes away from us, right? Uh, another being living in another galaxy would think that they are the center of the expansion. 